Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Maths Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the January 2023 International A Level Ed Excel um, paper from Pure Mathematics One. This is the Pure Mathematics One paper. And this question here is all about indices and exponential equations. Okay. Us about a um, substitution we have to make in this exponential equation and rewrite it according to the, the substitution in this form. Okay, so they're kind of like helping us out here. The question could have just said, solve this equation, find x, find the values of x. But they're kind of like showing us step by step what to do. So they're saying, use the substitution p equals 3 to the power of x. So what we need to do is express all of these terms in such a way that we can replace 3 to the power of x with p. So we have here 9 to the power of x, and we have 3 to the power of x plus 2, and we have 3 to the power of x minus 1. Those are the three terms that we can try to replace in terms of, uh, you know, write them in terms of 3 to the power of x. Now, first of all, 9 to the power of x is the same as 3 squared to the power of x, which can be rewritten as 3 to the power of x all squared, because we know that a to the power of m raised to the power of n is equal to the a to the power of m times n. So it doesn't matter which way they're written, it will still give you that same result. So 3 to the power of 2 to the power of x is the same as 3 to the power of x to the power of 2, which will give us 3 to the power of 2x. Okay, so both of these will give us the same answer, 3 to the power of 2x. So they're the same. So here I've now written this in terms of 3 to the power of x. I can replace the 3 to the power of x with p so that we know that this is going to become, this is going to become p squared now. And we can also think about the laws of indices, which are very important for us in this question, in terms of when you add the indices, okay, uh, when do you add the, the powers? It's when you're multiplying two numbers with the same base in, in index form. So if we think about what this was before, this was 3 to the power of x multiplied by 3 to the power of 2. When you multiply two numbers in index form with the same base, you add the powers. So this is going to be basically the same as saying 9 times 3 to the power, 3 to the power of x. Sorry, 9 times 3 to the power of x. And for this one, when you are subtracting the powers, it's basically 3 to the power of x divided by 3 to the power of 1. Okay, 3 to the power of x divided by 3 to the power of 1. You subtract the powers when you're dividing numbers with the same base in index form. So if we think about what this was before it became that, this is what it would have been. 3 to the power of x divided by 3 to the power of, minus, 3 to the power of 1, which gives you um, basically 1 third times 3 to the power of x. So now we've expressed each of these in terms of 3 to the power of x. Each of these are now expressed in terms of 3 to the power of x. And we can use this substitution now and then simplify it and hopefully it will give us something in the form that's required. So now this is 3 times. Now 9 to the power of x, we've written as 3 to the power of x squared. So I'll like it, write it like this first and then we'll uh, show it. In the next part, we've got 3 squared times 3 to the power of x, which is 9 times. So this is going to be plus 9 times. And this is 3 to the power of x equals, and you have 1 plus, and this is 1 third of 3 to the power of x. Okay, so now we have basically got this ready now to replace the 3 to the power of x's here. Each of these 3 to the power of x's can now be replaced with p. And I've got rid of the x from the equation, and I have everything in terms of p now. So this is 3 times p squared plus 9 times p equals 1 plus 1 third times p. Now, we want to show that it becomes this, so we can see that one thing we'd like to do is to get rid of the fraction. So if you multiply both sides by 3, that will get rid of the fraction. So this becomes 3 times 3, which is 9. So that's 9p squared plus 9 times 3, 27p, equals 3 times 1 is 3, and 3 times 1 third is... 1, so that's going to be plus p. So now we can show that it becomes this by subtracting 1p from both sides and subtracting 3 from both sides. So we have 9p squared plus 
26p minus 3 is equal to 0. So now we, we've shown what we had to show. Okay, we've shown what we had to show, and we have the answer. This is what we had to show. Okay, and that's part A done. 9p squared plus 26p minus 3 equals 0. Now, with these questions where it says show that, and they give you the way or the form that it should be written in, it's very, very important that you show your steps very clearly, okay, so that you don't just write all sorts, any sort of rubbish and then say, therefore, and you've got the answer that they've written down. You have to show very clearly you know exactly what you're doing when you are rewriting in this form. So multiplying by 3 and also showing how you changed these from this form into in terms of 3 to the power of x very very important so the the rule the rules and the laws of indices are really important in this type of question and i'm going to post a video at the end of this video uh, which is all about um, the rules of indices okay it's called back to basics and indices for those of you who have problems with this kind of thing hopefully that will help you with that uh, even further okay now for part b it says hence solve this equation okay so now even if we couldn't do part A, right? Even if we weren't able to do part A, which is, you know, not, you know, it's, it's likely that some people couldn't do it. Part A is worth three marks and part B is also worth three marks. Now, if we couldn't do part A, all right, then part B is kind of like set up for us already because we have rewritten this in the form 9p squared plus 26p minus 3 equals 0. We can show that this can be rewritten in this form with the substitution p equals 3 to the power of x. So now I can use that to solve this equation. So if I solve this equation and my values of p in the end I replace with 3 to the power of x, I can then solve it for x. So when I solve this equation, I have to solve it for in terms of x, not in terms of p. So in the end, I have to give my answers in terms of p. However, what I need to do is... Um, in, in, change that then to find the value in the equation in terms of x because this is actually the equation we're really solving we're trying to find the values of x which satisfy this all right but by using the substitution we kind of made it easier so we find the values of p using this and then those values of p we re rewrite into the substitution to find the x value so the first step is to find the solution to this equation now this equation here is something which many students will not um, will not get the full marks for because they will just use a calculator function to find the solutions and they won't they will just put p equals and p equals and if you look at the mark scheme it clearly states that if you see the answer written down you get no marks for that particular section of the paper for those for those answers you get zero marks whatsoever even for writing the correct answers down you don't get marks for that either so it's very 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 important that you uh, show the steps very clearly of how you got the answer. So you could either factorize, if you think that factorizing is too difficult in this question, you could use uh, completing the square, which is probably a bit more even complicated, or you can use the quadratic formula. Any one of those three methods, if you show that you've used those three, any one of those three methods properly, you get the method marks of this question. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to factorize this, and as the, the square term has a constant in front of that, it's not a one, I'm going to split the middle term, but I'm going to split it with my own little kind of style of using this, uh, you know, triangle, this, uh, sorry, this, this window, you could say, the square, this window method, right? So what you do is you write 9p squared, the square term in this corner, negative 3 in this corner, and then you find two numbers that, they, these two numbers, they must multiply to give you the same as these two multiplied, which is minus 27p squared, and when you add them, you get plus 26p. When you add them, you get plus 26p. These two numbers are most multiplied the same as those, but add together to give you plus 26p. So I know that when I multiply them, one is positive, one is negative, because I get a negative answer. And of course, it's 27 and 1, because if I, if I put 27p multiplied by minus 1p, I get minus 27p squared. And if I do 27p minus 1p, I get 26p if I add them. So that's pretty simple. Now I'm going to look at these two terms and write the common factor on top here. So 9 and 27, well, 9 goes into both of those and p goes into both of those. So that's a HCF of these two. I'll write it up here. Then I simply say, okay, 9p times this gives me 9p squared. Well, that must be p. 
9p times this gives me plus 27p, must be plus 3. And p times something gives me minus p, that's minus 1. So my these are my factors, 9p minus 1 times p plus 3 equals 0. So I've now factorized this. As I said, we could have used the quadratic formula, completing the square, but you have to show that you factorize this. Okay, so if you just write down the answers, you will get zero marks for this question. So you should know how to factorize and you should know how to show your steps. And if you try to do a cheat method like some people do, they use a calculator, the answer comes out as p equals 1 over 9 and p equals negative 3. They, they do something like they write p minus 1 ninth times p plus 3 equals zero. They do something like that, they kind of work backwards. They get the answer first, they work backwards. Now, that is a clear sign that you have done exactly that. And if they see that, you will definitely lose the marks for the question as well. So you have to be very, very careful not to lose marks for such a question. Right, so don't be going and doing stuff like that. If you're going to do this properly, if you wanted to work backwards properly, you want to cheat properly, then what you'd have to do is you'd say this is like 9p minus 1. 9p minus 1 equals 0, and this is p plus 3 equals 0. Think about what this was before it became 1 ninth. You basically multiplied by 9 and then added 1. So you have to uh, get the um, If you want to show this and then sh have this and then those, those steps, it's like you're working backwards. You start down here, you end up with this. The examiner won't know that. So that's like the cheap method of doing this to show your steps properly. But you should know how to factorize anyway. So I suggest that you learn how to factorize rather than cheating. But if you do have a problem, you could do that. You could find the answers and work backwards or work backwards properly. Right? So 9p minus 1 is equal to 0, and p plus 3 is equal to 0. That means p is equal to 1 over 9, as we said, and p is equal to negative 3. Now, some people might stop here and think they've solved the equation, but they haven't, because we have to find the values of x to solve this equation. So we're going to use the substitution that p equals 3 to the power of x. So now I can write that, that means 3 to the power of x is equal to 1 ninth, or 3 to the power of x equals negative 3. Now, solving these equations um, in P1, okay, uh, you don't need to use logarithms in P1. Right? Some people might be doing this P1 at a time when they haven't finished P2 yet. Like they might be taking the P1 exam in January and they might not have to gone through P2 properly yet. So logarithms is not required for you to know in P1. Okay, what you need to know, uh, what you're required to know in P1 is how to solve these equations, exponential equations. Okay, by making the bases the same. So what I can do is I can say, I know that 9 can be made into 3 to the power of something. So I can say this is 3 to the power of x equals 1 over 3 squared. And I know that 1 over 3 squared can be rewritten as 3 to the power of negative 2. Once you've made the bases the same, then the powers must be the same if these are equal. So this means x must equal negative 2. And that's one of our solutions. The other solution is found by solving this equation. And when you solve this equation, well, it can't be solved. Because if we know about our graphs of exponential functions, well, they look like that. That's y equals 3 to the power of x. And it can never equal negative 3. y equals negative 3 is down here. They will never intersect. So here, there's no solution. This will give you no solution. So this is our only solution, x equals negative 2. And that completes the answer to part b of this question. Um, so this is a question which relies heavily on your understanding and your manipulation of indices and um, exponential equations. So that's a very, very important topic for you if you have problems with it. Um, so other questions from this particular paper can be found in this playlist, the link for which will be over here. Other questions that are from indices and exponential equations will be found in the playlist over here. And I'm going to put a, play a video over here, which goes through the basics of indices and exponential equations, which might help some of you who have problems with this topic. And here you have a link for you to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.